The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. LSMFT. 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 Sure thing. That's right. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Civic Opera House in Chicago, Illinois, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Chicago, which is just a stone's throw from Waukegan, we bring you something that was thrown back, and here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I'm very proud of this turnout here in Chicago. Why, oh, yeah. this auditorium is packed. Do you know that there are 3,724 people sitting in the audience? 3,724 people? How do you know? I counted them as they came through the door. <laughs> I forgot the tickets were free. <laughs> but that's all right. I'll get them at the soda fountain. Yeah? <laughs> Leave it to me. Well, Jack, since we're broadcasting so close to Waukegan, I presume your father is in the audience. Yes, yes, he is, Don. He just got back from a trip to Florida, Havana, and Bermuda. Oh, I thought your father spent most of his time at home. And he used to, Don, but since he... Uh, since he won the I Can't Stand Jack Benny contest, he's traveling. <laughs> he's been all over, you know. Now, wait a minute, Jack. I thought, according to the rules, your relatives weren't allowed to enter the I Can't Stand Jack Benny competition. Don, when he heard about the contest, he disowned me. <laughs> so it was perfectly legal. Well... <laughs> Jack, I'll bet you didn't get many contest letters from the people in Chicago. They seem to like you here. They certainly do, Don. Did you see that reception I got at the station? Why, they tore the shirt right off of me. Of course, I don't blame them. After all, it isn't very often they get to see two movie stars at the same time. Two movie stars? Yeah, I have a picture of Charles Boyer tattooed on my chest. <laughs> you have? Oh, I don't believe it. Open your shirt. All right. There. Well, sure enough, Charles Boyer. Jack, what's the idea? It's a little trick I use for close-ups, you see. When I raise my arms, he smiles. <laughs> You'll be surprised how this tattoo of Boyer on my chest has helped me to... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. Gee, Mary, you're certainly looking cute today. I haven't seen you since we got off the train. How about a great big kiss? Okay, open your shirt. <laughs> He's for close-up, for heaven's sake. Mary, you mean Jack showed you that picture of Boyer on his chest? Oh, he shows it to everybody. Jack's got the only shirt that works like a Venetian blind. <laughs> Venetian blind, Venetian... Mary, you're just jealous because of the big reception I got when I arrived in Chicago. Big reception? Yes, when the train pulled in there, there were thousands of people at the station. Mayor Kelly was there. There were flags flying. And a big brass band, too. Yes, sir, and it was all for me. It was not. They were welcoming a carload of coal. <laughs> oh, was that what it was? You should have known when the band played, keep the home fires burning. Yeah, I, I never thought of that. Anyway, Mary, here we are in Chicago. You know, this is known as the Windy City. I know, Jack. Yesterday I saw you chasing your hair down the street. It wasn't my hair I was chasing. It happened to be a cat. A cat? <laughs> yes, a cat. <laughs> then why were you trying to coax it back with a saucer of thick shampoo? Mary, if you can't be nice to me, think of Boyer. 
And besides, there are a lot of my friends here from Waukegan. Oh, that's right, Jack. Your hometown is close to Chicago, isn't it? Close. Why, well, I could take a silver dollar out of my pocket and throw it as far as Waukegan. Let me see you do it. I will not. <laughs> throw a dollar. You tricked me into that once. The string broke. By the time I found it, inflation set in. It was only worth 63 cents. <laughs> So don't try to... Cheer up, Chicago. Your dim out is bad, but here comes Harris, that bright little lad. Yes. Turn on that switch and let me lose. Oh, that opera. <laughs> That's my bread and butter, Jackson. A nice way over there. Hey, Phil, what yes. do you want to come in with an entrance like that for? This dim out in Chicago is a serious thing. You're not kidding, Jackson. It is. Last night, Frankie, my guitar player, wrote out a check, and it was so dark, he signed somebody else's name. What? Now they got him charged with arson. Arson? You mean forgery. No, arson. That check was so hot it burned down the bank. <laughs> oh, 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 Harris, you may not have bushy eyebrows, but you sure keep the country in an uproar. <laughs> Oh, fine, fine. You know, Phil, if Frankie did a thing like that, he must have been drinking. No, no. <laughs> Libby, no, not my little Frankie. He's <laughs> on the wagon. Why, he hasn't had a drink. That kid hasn't had a drink since, um, since, uh... Since when? Wait a minute, I'm looking at my watch. <laughs> That's what I thought. Phil, forget about Frankie. After all, we came to Chicago to do a show, so let's do it. Yeah, good old Chicago. This is a great town, Jackson, but it's a little windy, isn't it? Well, of course, that's why they call it the Windy City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, Jackson, uh, what was that I saw you chasing yesterday? Oh, uh, oh, that was a cat. Then how come when you caught it, you shook it out and put it on your head? <laughs> I didn't put it on my head. It jumped up there. Then why did it have bangs? <laughs> because it jumped on backwards. <laughs> it happened to anybody. And, Mary, if I were you, I wouldn't be so smart just because we're away from home. You know, Marshall Field is not unlike the May Company. <laughs> You know that. And it won't be much fun working in the dark, either. Say, Jackson, I meant to ask you, how come they got this dim out here in Chicago? Phil, don't you know what's going on? Don't you read the papers? It's kind of the coal shortage. Yeah, isn't it awful? Huh? Oh, hello, Dennis. Anyway, Phil, uh, Phil, as I was saying, it's very easy to understand. You have to have coal to make electricity. Last night it was so dark I couldn't find my way back to the hotel. You couldn't, eh? You see, Phil, coal is the fuel they burn in boilers. Three times I fell over a fire plug. That's too bad. Now, they burn the coal to heat the water into steam. And then... Finally, an old lady had to help me across the street. <laughs> really? Uh, then they use the steam... to be a Girl Scout. Good, good. Then they use the steam to spin the turbines which generate the electricity. Well, then how come we don't have a dim out in Los Angeles? Well, out there we don't use coal, you see. We get our electricity from Boulder Dam. Ooh, what he said. <laughs> Dennis, Boulder Dam is a place... He to... said it again! <laughs> Look, Dennis, I'm trying to explain something to Phil. Will you just be quiet and tell us time for your song? Okay, but I don't know if I'll be able to sing good. I'm tired. Tired? Yeah, I had an awful time on the train. It's tough trying to sleep between Mr. Harris and his guitar player. Oh, you mean too crowded? No, they kept setting the bottle on my stomach. <laughs> And they were using my ear for an ashtray. <laughs> oh, well, don't worry, Dennis. You can get plenty of sleep while we're here in Chicago. Now, let's have your song, and then we'll... Come in. Yes? Well, here we are, Mr. Benny. Huh? Well, don't you remember? You invited us over. We're the quiz kids. Oh, yes, yes, the quiz kids. Look at that little one there. <laughs> uh, take off your hats, kids. Take off your hats. Come right in. Come right, sit down and watch the show. Watch the show? I thought you invited us over for a quiz contest. A contest? You mean you kids want to compete with us? 
<laughs> Don't be ridiculous. That, that would be like taking candy from a baby. Oh, come now, Mr. Benny. You're not a baby. <laughs> That's not what I mean. When I gave you those four tickets, I merely wanted you to come over, enjoy the show, buy a few bottles of soda pop, and relax. That's all. Oh, Jack, they're only kids. If they want a contest, let's give it to them. But, Mary... You can ask them easy questions. What? Oh, oh, sure. We'll play with them, have a lot of fun. Well, all right, kids, if that's what you want, we'll do it right after Dennis Day's song. Oh, thank you, Mr. Benny. You're welcome. Now, Dennis, we're ready for your song. What are you going to sing tonight? Well, since this is Mother's Day, I'm going to sing Little Mother of Mine. That's mighty nice, Dennis. And incidentally, you didn't forget to send your mother something, did you? Oh, no, I sent her a big picture of me taken from the back. From the back? Why in the world did you send her a picture like that? Well, I wanted her to see how my new suit fits. Oh. She worries about things like that. I know, I know. Go ahead, let's have your song. While he's singing, I better think up some easy questions for the quiz kids, I think. gentlemen, for our feature attraction, we are going to have a contest between the Lucky Strike Kids and the Quiz Kids. These children are here tonight to match wits with Mary Livingston, Don Wilson, Dennis A. and Phil Harris, who are all raring to go. We'll learn them, eh, fellas? <laughs> that gives you an idea, folks. Now, I, I, of course, will be the quiz master. You'll be the quiz master? Certainly. When I went to school, I was smart as a whip. Go on, you even needed a blueprint to open your lunchbox. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? Now, come on, let's get started with our questions. First, we... Hold it a minute. Hello? Hello, Mr. Barry, this is Rochester. <laughs> uh, 
I'm glad you called, Rochester. Does the manager of the hotel find a room for me? That's why I called. Uh, you got the bridal suite. The bridal suite? Good, good. Did you move all my stuff in? No, I'm waiting for you to get here. Why? I want to carry you over the threshold. <laughs> Oh, stop being silly and get my clothes unpacked. I can't do that, boss, until I shovel the rice out of the room. Shovel the rice out? Who had that bridal suite before me? Tommy Manville. <laughs> How do you know? There's a lawyer and a minister still sitting here. <laughs> oh, well, hurry up and get that room cleaned up. Okay, but it'll take hours and hours. Oh, Rochester, there couldn't be that much rice there. There couldn't. When I sit down in the middle of the room, I look like a raisin. <laughs> Never mind that. Never mind. Unpack my clothes and lay out a clean shirt. I'm going to the Chez Paris tonight. Okay, I'll give you the one with the cellophane front so Charles Boyer can see the floor show. <laughs> Good, good. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. Oh, say, Rochester, you do what I told you about the candles? You know, there's a dim out here. Yes, sir. I went to the store and bought 85 of them. 85 candles? How'd you get that many? When I told the man they were for you, he just handed them over and said, Tell Mr. Benny, happy birthday. <laughs> well, that was very nice. Goodbye, Rochester. Goodbye. And now... And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're all set for the battle of wits. The quiz kids versus the Benny kids. And may the best team win. You mean may the better team win? Yes, yes. <laughs> better. <laughs> I used to know that when I went to school, too. <laughs> all right, let's go. <laughs> and now I'll call the roll. First, the quiz kids. I'm Harvey. <laughs> I'm Harvey Bennett Fishman. I'm 15 years old, and I'm a junior at the South Shore High School. Now, Joel? I'm Joel Kupperman. I'm nine years old, and I am in 5A in the Fulton Public School. Oh, yes. You're the little fellow who's so clever in mathematics. Tell me, Joel, if an egg costs 5 cents, how much would a three-egg omelet cost? 15 cents. That's right. He's never been to the Chez Paris. <laughs> Mary. You mean they, they charge more there? Uh-uh, boy, he's going to bed early tonight. <laughs> he is not. We can always go out for a walk. Now, Ruthie. I'm Ruthie Duskin. I'm 11 years old, and I'm in the eighth grade at the University of Chicago Laboratory School. Cute, isn't she? Now, Richard. Richard. I am Richard Leixler. I'm six years old, and I... Um, and I am in 1A at Shakespeare Public School. Six years old. Gosh, it seems, it seems like... <laughs> I wish you could see him, folks, the listeners. Gosh, uh, it seems like only yesterday that I was six. Hmm? Gee, Mr. Benny, that must have been about 30 years ago. Uh, 31, Richard, 31. Have a bottle of pop on me. And <laughs> And now, <laughs> and now for the Benny kid. Philip? I'm Philip Harris. I live in Encino, California, and three nights a week I attend the Hollywood Recreation Pool Room. <laughs> what do you specialize in, Philip? The four ball in the side pocket. <laughs> very good, very good. And now, Mary? I am Mary Livingston. I live in Beverly Hills, and I graduated from the May Company. Oh, that's a lovely place. Uh, what did you learn there? If you worn the stockings, madam, you cannot exchange them. <laughs> Very good. Isn't she bright? Now, Donald. I am Donald Wilson. I'm six years old, and I weigh 243 pounds. <laughs> He's the cutest one of all. What is your ambition, Donald? I haven't any. That's why I'm so fat. <laughs> I thought so. Sit down, but easy. Now, uh, Dennis. I am Dennis. 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 Day. Dennis Day. Uh, how old are you, Dennis? I'll be one in December. <laughs> you'll, uh... <laughs> Wait a minute. 
You'll be one? Yes, my mother's raffling me off. <laughs> well, you're a turkey if I ever saw one. Huh? <laughs> and now, folks, that you've met all the kitties, we will proceed with the battle of wits. And for each question used, I will score one point for the side that answers correctly. And furthermore, I am personally awarding a prize of $10 to the winning team. Well, that's fair enough. You'll find out. There it is. Now, our first question this evening comes from Mrs. Leonard Fenchel of Chicago. Listen carefully, Harvey. A coleoptera, a musca domestica, and a lepidoptera were having a bit of a tete a tete on a screen door. Now, if you suddenly appeared with a fly swatter, one of the party would leave quite hastily. Which one would it be? The coleoptera? The Musca Domestica or the Lepidoptera? Have you got the answer, Harvey? Well, the Musca Domestica would leave because it's the common housefly. Oh. I mean, very good. Very good, Harvey. <laughs> that's, um, that's one point for the quiz kid. Now, Dennis, in order to be absolutely fair, I'm going to ask you a question along the same line. Now, listen carefully. What fly would you associate with butter? <laughs> Well, uh... Well, uh... That might be a little tough, so I'll put it this way. <laughs> butter is associated with what fly? The butterfly. Ruthie, I didn't ask you. <laughs> Dennis, you didn't hear that answer, did you? No, I've got ashes in my ear. <laughs> oh. Mary Livingston. The butterfly. Correct. And there's a point for the Benny kids. Both sides are even. Wait a minute, Mr. Benny. Sorry, Harvey, but we won on a technicality. <laughs> now, uh, let's see. Oh, brother, wait till you get on their show. Mary, please. <laughs> now, here's a problem of mathematics sent in by Clifford Gordon, 10th Street, Waukegan, Illinois. Well, gee, Mr. Benny, if it's a problem in mathematics, just ask Joel Kupperman. Oh. I have another question. <laughs> From Julia Sinek in Waukegan, Illinois. I think you can answer this, Ruthie. I'm ready, Mr. Benny. Now, this problem is in the field of ichthyology. Ichthyology? What's that? How do I know? <laughs> anyway, Ruthie, name the five types of fishes in order of their development and give examples of each. Go ahead. The size of stomata, which are lamprey eels and hagfishes. Next comes the elastomobranchi, the sharks and rays. That's right. Next, the gonoidei, which are the armored fishes. Uh-huh. After that come the teleostomy, the true fishes. Yes. And last of all, the dipnoi, which are the lung fishes. Isn't that amazing? Very good, Ruthie. Now, Philip Harris. Yes, sir. I think it's only fair that I ask you the same type of question. How do you spell fish? <laughs> Come on, Philip, go ahead. How do you spell fish? F-I-S-C-H. That's right. That's right, Joe Fish. I know him well. That's two points for the quiz kids and two points for the Benny kids. Now, Richard, here's a problem in mathematics that comes from Dave Wolf of Chicago. Well, Mr. Benny, if it's a problem in mathematics, why don't you ask Joe Kupperman? Harvey, don't tell me how to run my contest. I'm going to ask Richard. Now, Richard, two men who earn $450 and $150 a month, respectively, decide to build a house and divide the cost in proportion to their income. Each of these two men has three sons who help with the work, but they cannot work full time. One works every day, the second every other day, the third every third day, and so on. Are you, uh, are you following, Richard? Yes, are you? <laughs> Don't worry about me, bub <laughs> Now, they all work the first day And they finish the house The second day, they all work together Each guy has three kids, huh? Phil, go away, will you? <laughs> you know from nothing Now, Richard Richard, one joint owner I mean, one joint owner <laughs> to pay $1,500 more than the other. How much did the house cost, and how long did it take to build it? Well, Dennis, I see you got your hand up. What is the answer? Butterfly. (laughs) 
Right, that's three for the Benny kid and two for... Wait a minute, wait a minute, Mr. Benny. We were on another question. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. Well, Richard, have you got the answer yet? Richard? Yes, sir. The house cost $3,000, and it would take 60 days to build it. Excellent. $3,000 and 60 days is correct. How do you know? I trust Richard. <laughs> uh, now, let's see. Oh, Mr. Benny. What is it, Dennis? What in the shirt Charles Boyer is peeping out? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> well, Richard earned another point for the quiz kids, making it three to three. Now, Mary... Here's your question. The answer is 15. Wait till I ask you. <laughs> now, Mary, concentrate. If you had 20 apples and your mother took away 10 and gave you back five, how many would you have? 15. You heard me. <laughs> how did you know I was going to ask you? Boyer told me. <laughs> now, cut that out. Boyer told you. I told you to button your shirt. Quiet. <laughs> now, here's a question for Donald Wilson. Donald... Oh, Don. Hey, Fatty. Yes? Uh, thank you, Richard. Now, Donald, here's a question from Bert Scott of Salt Lake City. Now, Donald, if you were on your way to a drugstore, and the drugstore was two miles away, and you could make it in 17 minutes, but you had to cross a bridge, and on this particular day, the bridge was washed out, and you had to row a boat across the river. How wide is the river? 350 feet. But there's a strong current carrying you downstream at the rate of 3.6 miles per hour. So it takes you an extra 23 minutes to reach the grocery store. Now, here's the question. What would you buy when you got there? <laughs> a package of Lucky Strikes. Absolutely correct. Now, Donald, why would you buy that package of Lucky Strike? Because Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, they're so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Very good elaborated. <laughs> the score is now five to three in favor of the Benny kid. Now, Harvey, here's a question for you. Well, if it's mathematics, ask Joel Kupperman. I just changed it to history. <laughs> now, listen. What did the United States purchase from Denmark after World War I? The Virgin Islands for uh, $21 million. You're wrong. It was $25 million. It was $21 million. The United States paid $25 million. Jack ought to know. They borrowed the money from him. <laughs> Certainly. I remember when I took Woodrow Wilson down into my ball. Now, another question in history. Dennis, who was the first president of the United States? Come on, Dennis. Who was the first president of the United States? Uh, uh... Come on. George? George? My name is Dennis. I know. <laughs> now, who was the first president of the United States? He was the father of our country. George? George? Jessel. No! <laughs> anyway, I'm asking Dennis. My name is George. It is not. <laughs> All right, Phil, I'll ask you. Who was the first president of the United States? George. George. What do women do on Monday? Washing. That's right. George. Washing. Washing. Yeah. What am I sticking out at you? Your tongue. Correct. George Washington tongue. <laughs> the score is six to three in favor of the Benny kids. We win, and the $10 bill goes to me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is a frame-up. Frame-up? These questions were on the up and up. Well, you were cheating. Oh, yeah? Well, it's a good thing Richard didn't say that. Believe me. Oh, come on, kids. Let's go. Let's get out of here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you like that? A bunch of sore losers. Play, genius. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So round, so firm, so fully packed. 
So free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers are on tonight's program. Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. I'm Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, 49, American. Uncle Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs> 